Hi everybody, Beanmeister22 here. Today we're going to talk about how to identify original movie posters from fakes. And at the same time, we're going to frame up some original movie posters. These are just cheap frames I got on Amazon. They come in a three pack, but they are the perfect size for a authentic original movie poster. And that would be 27 inches by 40 inches. Some original movie posters are 27 by 41, but that is not as common. The movie posters we're talking about as original, they come from the studios. They are sent to theaters to be displayed when the movie's played. There were also posters that were issued to be sent to the DVD and VHS rental stores. Remember video rental places? They were sent there. They might be slightly different than the ones sent to the theater, and they might even be printed a few months after the original ones for the theater were printed, but they're still considered originals. These posters are not supposed to be sold. They're not for retail. The theaters are supposed to send them back to the distributor or they can be given away. In fact, years ago, we had a friend here on YouTube. His name was Shannon, Mr. Nice Guy. He used to work at a theater and he could get movie posters. And he had some pretty cool ones for, you know, big name movies. His boss said he can take as many as he wants, but he can't sell them. So Mr. Nice Guy would have contests, and he would just give them away on his YouTube channel. And that's kind of when I first started learning about original movie posters, because you guys know I collect a lot of weird things. And original movie posters eventually became one of them. How can we tell if they're a real poster from the studio and not just some replica or reprint or something you saw at, at the department store on the poster rack. And then why do we care? Well, we care because originals came from the studio when the movie was originally released. They have to be original or they're not worth anything. And they have to be issued by the studio or they're not worth anything. And if they say second printing or restrike, that means they were printed for poster dealers after the original release and they are worthless. They're not originals. Well, I mean, if you want to look at it, it says, cool, I like that, yeah, but it's, they're not worth anything. Many of the original posters were double-sided and they were printed on both sides of the sheet so they looked good in those movie light boxes. So basically it was for display purposes. Original movie posters come rolled or folded. Older ones usually were folded unless it was card stock and then it could either be folded or rolled. And we're talking older, older ones. Now here's where it gets tricky. Some original movie posters, not all, will have an NSS number printed on the back, stamped or printed. And that I believe came from the distributor or the studio. But they all don't have that, and that used to be common, but it really isn't that common anymore. So what you should really look for is the size. It'll be 27 inches by 40 inches or 27 by 41. There's a lot of fake sizes out there. So if you get a poster and it's labeled as original and it's 26 by 39 or 24 by 36, those are really common fake sizes. I don't know if the paper is cheaper for that size, but yeah, those are really common fakes. And then there's the common sense. An older poster, you know, one that's 20, 30, 40 years old and it looks new, well, it's probably a fake. And there's a lot of people selling fakes online. If anywhere on the poster or in the fine print it says Portal Productions, that is a reproduction company. That is not an original movie poster. It's a reproduction of an original movie poster. It's worthless. Older movie posters will turn yellow. You'll see, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 year old, these old movie posters, they're turning yellow, kind of like newsprint. Well, that's because it was acidic paper, low quality paper. Also, if a movie was re-released, like if Jaws came out, whatever it came out, and then, you know, 10 years later, they send Jaws out to the theaters again and they make new posters, that is actually considered an original movie poster. Clearly, it's not as valuable as an original one from when it first came out, but it is considered an original. Those aren't fake movie posters because they were printed, contracted by the studio, and sent out to theaters and video rental stores when they existed. But really, all that aside that we've talked about here, the most important thing is a reputable dealer. Whether you're looking on Amazon or eBay, oh, you know, eBay is just oh, teeming with fakes of everything. The dealer, don't just, don't look at the reviews. 
I mean, you can, but you can't trust reviews anymore. Not on Amazon, not on eBay, not on anything. Number one rule of reviews is you throw out all the five stars, you throw out all the one stars, and then you start reading the things in between. And you'll see the wording is very similar. To everything else are just all fake reviews. So you need a reputable dealer, one that isn't just some guy selling some posters he printed up on a big printer, a dealer with a history. He's probably going to have not just posters, but, you know, various kinds of movie memorabilia, autographs, posters, you know, all kind of collectibles. And if you're not sure, contact the seller and talk to him. Maybe somebody used to work at a theater and they have these things and the theater doesn't exist anymore, so they believe that it's okay for them to sell them because there is no boss to say, hey, you can't sell them and fire you, right? And if that's the case, just remember, look for the 27 by 40 inch size. Another thing that can be confusing is the movie posters, there can be several different movie posters for a movie. They sent several to the theater, then there's an international release, and then certain countries might have their own. So there is that. Doesn't mean they're not original posters, but you know, it's international version, domestic version. So yeah, you have to, you gotta pay attention. So a reputable dealer is what's most important. Now for me, I do have a few single side printed movie posters and they are originals and uh, they have been verified. And most of your legitimate dealers, your reputable dealers, just like with auction houses that we've talked about in the past, if they say it's original, they guarantee it. If you find out it's not because you look and say, hey, wait, it even says it was printed two days ago. They will refund your money. And that's the difference of some fly-by-night, just some guy, hey, I gotta sell these real quick. Here yeah. The other thing that you should look for, we're talking about fakes, right? So the other thing was we talked about the 26 by 39, really common fake size, and the 24 by 36, another really common fake size, is very popular movies. Very popular movies, they're more apt to be bootlegged and, and, and reproduce and faked than, you know, just an average movie. If you find a poster for sale, since it's original, it's from the Karate Kid movie, and say it's 40 or 50 bucks, and then you see one from Jaws, and they're 50 or 60 dollars or 100 dollars, I'm going to look into that Jaws one, because it's kind of a really good deal. Star Wars movies, very popular movies, are more at risk of being bootlegged. So once again, you're back to a reputable dealer. And reputable dealers will also tell you, hey, here's a list of known popular movies, you know, that are faked. Whether it's done domestically or overseas, they say, oh, people really like this, these uh, Star Wars ones. So we're going to, we will print us out the whole bunch of Star Wars posters and we will sell them to the Americans. Yeah, and people fall for it. Oh, it's original. No, it's not. It's a bootleg. If it's the proper size, the 27 by 40, and if it is printed on both sides, you know, for the theater light boxes... Nine times out of ten, it's going to be an original. And if it's not from some super blockbuster greatest movie ever that's known for being bootlegged, it's probably almost guaranteed to be an original. Because if you're bootlegging posters of average movies, you're already not going to get top dollar for it anyways. You're not going to go the effort to print on both sides. And, you know, it takes a little effort. It has to be lined up properly so it looks good through that theater light box. One other thing we're going to talk about really quick is those mini movie posters, the promo posters. They are generally 11 by 17 or 11 and a half by 16, you know, or very similar in size. And they were made as giveaways at the theater. They were printed by the studios. They were sent to the theater to give to people there on opening night. I do have one of those. They are, they're considered originals, but they're, you know, they're not a full-size movie poster. And they are not as collectible or valuable as a full-size movie poster. Because remember, they would give these things away. And whereas there might only be thousands of original movie posters printed, there would be tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of these promo mini posters. All right, so if you got anything out of this video, you were looking for the size of an original movie poster, 27 inches by 40 inches, or possibly 27 by 41, you're looking for a double-sided poster. Not all will be double-sided. And I can come up with no rhyme or reason why there's some that aren't, but the double-sided ones are going to be higher quality because they're designed to be seen through the light boxes at theaters, and most importantly, a reputable dealer. If you're not sure about the dealer, talk to them, call them up, send them an email, and then if you still don't feel comfortable, you know, either don't make the purchase or just purchase something that doesn't cost you a lot of money so you won't be out a lot of money if you're getting screwed.
All right, so I hope I didn't confuse you way too much today, but yeah, it, you know, collecting things is something we do a lot around here. All right, so leave your comments in the comment section. As always, thanks for watching. Beanmeister 22, the most dangerous man on YouTube. <laughs>